Hello everybody, I'm Mustang Gas, and welcome to the killer edition of the Prestige 100 Challenge, where we try to hit cap prestige before the next DLC drops. And we're doing it on, if you haven't already guessed, the alien. I am so stoked this killer was edited by daylight. The sole reason I haven't already done a Prestige 100 Challenge is because I was hoping Alien would come to Dead by Daylight, and it's finally here! Oh my god, what a time to be a Dead by Daylight fan! Oh, it's amazing. This is amazing. The alien is a super cool killer with a crawler ability that allows it to tail whip over pellets and out of windows, and a tunnel system throughout the map that allows it to traverse super fast, although that is counterbalanced by the survivor's ability to use to deploy flamethrowers throughout the map that will reset you out of your ability. Now first off, I'm going to be showing you guys what perks I've been using on my alien to get my first 10 prestiges, and also what perks I wouldn't recommend on alien, because of its abilities there's a lot that don't synergize with it all that well. First off, we have the early game perks of Lethal Pursuer and Corrupt Intervention. Now, both of these perks still work on Alien. You will still see survivors as long as they're not running Discordance, and Corrupt will still help you set up a 3 gen. But look at this. So here is a match where we bring those perks, find someone right away, immediately get into chase, and get the early down. But we're not making use of any of our Alien abilities, and we could just play this on like a perfectly basic in one killer. We want to try and lean in to Alien's power to get the most value out of it. So that was a 24 second down with Lethal Pursuer. Now let's try the exact same thing with no perks and using the Alien strategy. So for this strategy I immediately mark the furthest away tunnel into the tunnels to get my tail ability early and run around until I hear a progressed gen or survivor's footsteps and boom down in 19 seconds. That is insane. No perks were needed for that. Next up some perks that actually do work with Alien. Make your choice and devour hope. Both of these perks require you to be a certain amount of distance away for their effects to activate. And of course, as you just saw, you can traverse the map ridiculously fast using Alien's tunnels. And remember, this is not like Dredge's teleports. You do not need to leave the tunnel for the distance to register. So you can very easily get away and get the proc on these abilities with very little counterplay from the survivors unless it's a full-blown face unhook. Make your choice is going to expose the person who unhooked the survivor from the hook. And Devour Hope, once you hook three survivors, is going to give you insta-downs and then mories once you hit five. I've made a build around this with Undying, which is a totem that protects Devour Hope once, and Pentamento, so if they get destroyed, we can then relight the totem to show the generators down. Now, I'm not a big fan of hex builds, as if you get unlucky and they all get destroyed in the early game, you're missing most of your build. But if they don't get destroyed, this build will absolutely clap the survivors, and I've been clapped by this build multiple times. And here is a few more interesting combos. We have Discordance and Gearhead for aura reading on the gens. Gearhead has been buffed, trust me, it's good now. And Trail of Torment and Dragon's Grass for an absolutely insane stealth combo. Now, Trail of Torment has been buffed, so it doesn't disactivate when you attack. You will still be undetectable after kicking a generator into a survivor interactress with it. And you can completely counter this by checking on Dragon's Grass if they're exposed when they touch it. Although I would recommend only using the default or the prestige alien skin for this, as all the other alien skins are very easy to see and if you're being undetectable you want to do your absolute best to blend in so i'd recommend prestige or normal alien as the other ones are all ridiculously easy to see especially the alien queen is literally off the screen she's so tall so the idea with this build is find a gen kick the gen and then take survivors by surprise now these aren't the most op combos but if you're looking for some fun combinations of perks to try out aliens these are definitely the ones i never would have thought any of these were actually good but i recently did a all perks in alphabetical order streak on alien over on my twitch and these were the ones that i was like wow these are actually really good so if you're looking for a fun build try these out and bonus alien tip, if you encounter a flamethrower in the edge of a map where a generator's already been completed, leave that flamethrower there, the survivor's going to have to waste an incredibly long time moving it. Now by far the most annoying thing about alien is when you activate your crawler mode, which is unoptional, you get a significantly lower point of view. It's kind of like old school white, so it is going to be a lot harder tracking survivors, and Shadowborn doesn't really help. But stick in there, you'll get used to it, and you will get the hang of Alien in the end. And without further ado, this is the build I've actually been running on Alien, and this was my first 5 gen massacre. This, if anything, proves the power of Alien. Starting off with the classic Alien tech of immediately jumping down to the tolls to find someone works a treat. 
every time. This has only not worked for me twice, and the only reason it didn't work is I wasn't able to accurately track my footprints. But occasionally you get situations like this, where it's literally a free hit. The reason for this is people at the start of the match often grab the flamethrowers right away, and even if you're going to deploy it right in front of the alien station, it takes a few seconds to play that animation, and as you saw there, we hit a mid-animation, and it actually destroys the flamethrower. It won't be dropped on the ground, it'll be destroyed. I remember I was completely bamboozled by this playing Survivor when I got hit carrying one, and then went back to pick it up and it wasn't there, I was just like, what? <laughs> Alright, crawl mode up. Nice, nice. Get those cheeky tail whips in there. Windows are so unsafe against the alien once you have this. And if you bring the self-destruction bolts to vault windows 30% faster, that's our pivot on here, then they are even less safe from the windows that they are on. 30% is so much faster, it's almost like you don't slow down. Boom! Oh, M1 and the M2. Beautiful, beautiful. I've seen a lot of people say that... M1 perks are bad on alien perks like sloppy that apply hemorrhaging, save the best for last that make you recover quicker, coup de blast that make your lunges go further, or devour and hex no one escapes death that make them exposed. Now, yeah, it's not going to synergize with your tail attacks, but you're not a huntress. You know? Your M1s are good. You can play as an M1 killer if you if you want that alien, and sometimes you will have to play. Hey, look at that hit, by the way. Oh my god, outrageous! Sometimes you will have to play as an M1 killer if the balance survivors have optimal flamethrower placement. So do not be afraid to run those M1 perks. They work absolutely fine on alien. They work absolutely fine. Now here we see just how punishing it is missing a tail shot. I've seen people say that missing a tail shot means absolutely nothing as you can maintain your movement speed as alien. Yeah, but you also can't attack for like three seconds. They are going to be on the opposite side of the loop if you miss a tail shot. So do not be afraid to M1. And this is a killer that if you're just started out playing alien, I would not recommend going tail only. It is, it is very difficult to hit people that are actively dodging you or running into you is for some reason the collision at point blank range is insane. I'm not even joking, I've probably tried 25 times to hit people point blank range where I could have just gotten a free M1 and I've only ever landed it once. It's very awkward, it's very awkward. You can do it, but don't be afraid to M1. You can M1 at any time and if you can M1, I'd say do M1 as an M1 is a lot harder to hold than the current Good flame for a person here. But remember, you only get slowed down a tiny bit if the flamethrower removes you from your crawl estate. So don't always go out of your way to destroy the flamethrower unless you know you're not going to hit them. Because very rarely that like half second of slowdown is actually going to result in them getting to a safe location. If you're wondering why she ducked there, uh, there is a survivor tech where you try and hide in the glare of the flamethrower and sort of treat it like a fork and lose line of sight on the killer. This has only ever worked on me once, but it can work. It can work. So uh, do your absolute best to accurately track the survivors where you get flamethrowed. If you find a lot of survivor inversing alien and you're thinking to yourself, what is a good flamethrower placement? Well, I reckon the absolute best placements are, I don't know how this will work. Right? <laughs> oh, I think the absolute best flamethrower placements are top of stairs, as it is almost impossible for a killer to avoid that. And if you put it just over the lip of the stairs, it's very hard for the alien to destroy it before the ability activates. And in between loops. So picture this, right? You picture a strong loop, a few meters gen, a few meters strong loop. Now you'd think you'd want to put them right in the loop. But if you had like shack, hell yeah. Chuck that one up. That's, that's a good treat. But say you got like LT other side and long windows other side. It's actually probably best to put it in the middle and run past it while the alien is following you. If you say you were healthy and you took a hit to get a speed burst to make it to the next loop and the alien has to run past that, the alien has three choices. They can destroy it, giving you a lead. They can walk straight past it, losing crawler mode. Or they can go around it, also giving you a lead. So I actually reckon in between loops is the best place to place the flamethrowers. Although, it is very difficult, as once you finish that gen, if the alien doesn't break it, you're going to have a long walk moving it over, and you can currently only have four on the map, so it could be very important. Pro tip, remember where they are, and rotate back to them if you manage to get quite far ahead of the alien. Like, you go, like, way out of your way to get to one, drag the alien to, like, a nice dead side of the map, so you can progress all things. 
don't uh, don't get embarrassed. Uh, that's the flamethrowers uh, a few times. For some reason, they have an incredibly small collision box. Like, outrageously small. And they even seem to have weird immobility frames. Like, if it's disactivated, sometimes it just won't let you break a flamethrower, or it won't let you break it from behind. But don't let that demoralize. You keep on trucking. You'll get it uh, destroyed eventually. That is a, a great tip for Alien in general. Don't get demoralized. Don't get demoralized. Like, think back to the first time you played Huntress and you were missing all your hatchets. That's what Alien's like. You, you are going to be missing all your tail whips at first, but once you get the hang of it, the ability absolutely collapse. Windows? Not safe. Pallets? Not safe. Nowhere is safe. <gasps> Although, I'll be honest, uh, survivors try to dodge out in the open is actually really hard to hit. If you're wondering about the build I'm using here, this is a bit of like the opposite to a tunnel build where we go for all targets. So on the left there we have Scourge Hook's Pain Resonance, which is going to cause regenerators to regress by 25% of the survivors here, for one, one hook on each survivor. And then we have Grim Embrace, once we've hooked all survivors once. Boom, it activates, blocking every generator and giving us a aura read on the obsession. This perk is actually insane. Now, in 10 matches, I had one match where I got gen rush, and I wasn't able to activate this. And I had one match where the last person I hooked was the obsession, which you want to try and avoid, but sometimes, you know, you just find the obsession last. There's nothing you can do about that. But 8 out of 10 matches, I got absolutely insane value out of this perk. Grim Embrace, kind of slept on. I'd highly recommend uh, checking it out. And all you need is four hooks for that, and then, like, the whole match is, like, completely stopped for 40 seconds, because all the gens are blocked. And then we have a couple of in-game perks, with No Way Out, adding 8 seconds, is that 8 seconds? 12 seconds? To the, uh, Uber gates for each time we hook a survivor for the first time. And no one escapes death, as long as there is a totem left at the end of the match, it becomes lit, and we get a 4% speed bonus, and our M1s become insta-downs. Now, I've literally downed survivors with my tail during this time, just because the 4% was like such a huge bonus. And remember, you could use the 4% to get tail whips, and have other survivors unaware of the fact that they're exposed. You can hide the uh, no one escapes death for longer, which works an absolute treat. I'd highly recommend this build if you're stripping for gold. But unfortunately, that's all we have time for today, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. And tune in next week for another epic alien build, and we're going to be talking aliens add-ons. Have a good one.